and it spread around, of course, quickly on Facebook, and now there's a petition with more than 4,000 names calling for them to be expelled. We'll speak to the chair of the Lester B. Pearson School Board, Noel Burke, in uh, just a moment. But first, Sabi Hinkson joins us. She's a teacher. She's taught at several Lester B. Pearson schools, like John Rennie. Uh, she, she herself has two daughters. They're 10 and 20, and her 10-year-old attends at Lester B. Pearson uh, School. And um, Sabi is live with us on the phone right now. Good morning. Good morning. How did you come across this video? Um, I'd just like to correct, I have not taught it, John Rennie. <laughs> just wanted to correct that. But um, I first came across the video, I saw it on my Facebook feed at around 11.40 a.m. yesterday. And at that time, it only had 123 views. And what did you think when you saw it? So when I saw it, I had actually, I'm, I'm working from home and I had gone upstairs where my um, eldest daughter and her best friend were sitting. And I started watching the video and at first I was just offended because I thought they were just going to do blackface. And that, that was enough for me because it takes a long time for them to get into the actual content. And then shortly after, when I realized that it was getting worse, I was absolutely Lord, I was hurt. I was angry and sad as a black mother of two young daughters, as an educator, as a, a family outreach coordinator, and every capacity of me hurt to see something like this, especially during a time like this. Did you make it to the end of the video? Well, just because um, I felt like I needed to see everything just so that I could make a comment on it because also as a, a community leader, I have my own nonprofit organization and an educator. People often come to me to comment and get my opinion on things. So I felt like I needed to watch the whole video to just get the whole gist of it. And as I proceeded through it, it hurt even more because I realized that this wasn't even a, a fly by minute thing or, you know, let's just put this thing together. This was well thought out. This was like an end of year school project. The amount of work that went into this made me, it, it just crushed me because I said so much hate in one video. It was the most racist video I have ever seen put out by students. Well, that, actually, that was what I was going to ask you is whether you, I mean, is there anything that you have seen that compares to this that has come from our community? I have never seen anything that compares to this. Um, as a teacher, I've had students come to me with um, Instagram accounts that were making fun of black people, like, um, you know, and, and they were created by kids within the school. And then when I went to go see it, the pages were taken down, but the kids had taken screenshots. But it was like, you know, comparing us to um, monkeys and primates and stuff like that. And it was just stuff like that. But this was a, comp a compilation of the worst things I've seen. And even to think about the stuff that the kids in the U.S. have been expelled for, it doesn't even match up to the caliber of this video. I've had friends from the United States who saw the video without me sharing it because it circled around America like that. And they've quote unquote said to me, well, Sabi, that's how you guys are getting down in Canada. We thought that things were different over there and it's nice in Canada. They're like, it's the same stuff over there, isn't it? And it's, it's so, it's so foreign to me for Americans to say, wow. How did you answer that when they said that to you? Well, um, how I answered it is I, you know, I said to my friend, I said, I never said that it wasn't like that over here. I said, I've seen it enough. And I've brought it to the attention of administrators and stuff like that. But Canada, and I, I can't speak for the whole of Canada, but in Montreal and the schools that I've seen, they have this idea of we're not going to address it like that. We're going to shove it under the, the rug or we're not going to address it as drastically as it should be addressed because it is painful. It is psychologically damaging. It is a very dangerous thing when you involve race in bullying and I think we're not dealing with it um, we're not dealing with it appropriately and so I said you know this is, has been here I said I've experienced this growing up here and I just said I was hoping that if things would get better for my children and in tears I said oh I see that it seems to be getting worse who's not dealing with it here do you think well you know I think it comes from the school board there needs to be an implementation of zero tolerance for racism. 
Um, you start bullying someone based on something, especially that they cannot change, such as skin color, that is emotionally and psychologically damaging. It takes a toll on people for many years. And the school board, like I said, needs to make it zero tolerance. If you let children know that there's zero tolerance, and you don't just say it, you mean it. Meaning, if you make anybody feel like they're not included, you exclude anyone, you make anybody feel little, you are going to be removed from the school. Kids are risk takers, yes, but if they see that you mean something and you hold them accountable for it and that there are repercussions, they will act accordingly. The most part of them, they will act accordingly. So the school board needs to stay. They say they want to fight racism and, you know, especially with the climate right now. Well, now is your chance to show how you are actively going to fight racism. So you think that these two girls should be expelled? So this is my my opinion is that a school is somewhere where someone you're supposed to feel comfortable. A child is not going to learn unless they feel comfortable. So I feel like these two children have not only made uh, a school feel uncomfortable, they've almost made a nation feel uncomfortable. This video is at 150,000 views. There's so many people that are hurt and that are in pain. So yes, I think this is very severe and they need to be expelled. However, I think it's up to the school board to figure out a way that both parties are not psychologically damaged. So you remove the girls from the school, yes, but you need to put something in place where they can psychologically deal, them and their families, with what has happened and the, the drastic um, extent of this. And you need to, there needs to be some sort of reformation, some sort of discourse to figure out, well, where did this come from? Where does this hate come from? We're not going to point fingers and say it's taught at home. We all have kids, and sometimes your kids do things that surprise you and they haven't learned it at home. But we need to figure out where it came from. But in the meantime, a whole school community should not feel uncomfortable because of this hatred. So I think anything less than an expulsion is just basically a slap in the face for the progress we're trying to make against racism. Uh, Sabi, did your 10-year-old see it? So um, my 10-year-old, I proceeded to show her because she was wondering why, um, she was upstairs, but she was wondering why my daughter and I and her best friend were so heated and what we were talking about. So as, as a 10-year-old going into grade five, and you know, she's on social media, I figured I would show it to her because she'll see it anyway. She what she saw it two seconds of it. She the first N word. She said, "I cannot watch this anymore." And I said, "Well, Fudi gets worse." She says, "I can't watch it anymore, Mom. I remember when I was called the N word." And she said, "I also remember when a kid in my class said the N word." And the teacher just said, "Oh, that's not nice." And she said, "Didn't get in trouble for it." And she says, "It hurts me still to this day." She's like, "I cannot watch this video." And uh, can you imagine? what it would be like to be in a classroom now, for instance, you know, school goes back in September with these girls. I don't think it's safe for them even. Like I'm, I'm in, like I said, I'm an educator and even as a mom and I'm looking at it from both angles. Is this going to be a safe environment for these girls to go back in? Like you put this school on the map. This is a historical moment for Montreal. This is the first time Montreal is really realizing that something like this exists. A lot of my colleagues who are white teachers are calling me crying, saying, Sabi, I didn't know this was like that in Montreal. So is it safe for them to go back to school in September with other kids who are emotional, thinking that we've been sitting in class with someone who hates some of our classmates like that? Like this. This was a lot of hate in one video, so I, I don't even think it's safe for these girls to go back. Sabi Hinkson, thanks for speaking to us. Thank you for having me. Uh, Sabi is a teacher, and she has taught at several Lester B. Pearson schools. She has two daughters, a 10 and a 20-year-old, and Noel Burke is the chair of the Lester B. Pearson School Board, and he's live with us on the phone this morning. Uh, Noel Burke, good morning.